हेलो Let me present my screen to you all. My screen is visible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, listen, everyone. This is your second lecture, right? So all of you know the security goals and uh, regarding all that basic concept. All of you know. So first of all, can you tell me uh, which are the security goals? What do you mean by confidentiality? Can anyone please reply? Hello. hello okay general says data must be between only sender and receiver okay 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 <clears throat> like no one uh, okay something to be not shown publicly confidentiality okay what is the another goal of uh, security yes the first one is a confidentiality what about the other which are the other goals of security integrity very nice any other okay availability okay good okay okay so listen everyone uh, first of all uh, i will explain you some basic concept and then that then after start with the new uh, like so see there are mainly basically there are three security goals confidentiality integrity and availability so what do you mean by confi confidentiality so if allies let's say the sender sends some text message to a bob then what happened the receiver then only the receiver that should be able to receive or read the message right so that is the concept of confidentiality confidentiality means if sender send some message to a receiver then only the receiver should be able to receive or read the message so that is the concept of confidentiality but see if some attacker so in most uh, in most of the case see um, in most of the lectures i am doing hello 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 is there any problem hello okay 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 if some uh, some other person say oscar or eve see most of the case i am using this word oscar or eve right so that is you can say that intruder or attacker it receives if he will not be able to interpret it and provided the ally has encrypted the original message so encryption is a way to convert a original message to uh, to a form which can't be easily decoded by the unauthorized person so see i am going little bit fast because in first lecture already this thing is done okay so just uh, let's uh, revise the some of the concept and then after today i will explain you the new topic that is number theory so uh, see sir will explain you uh, symmetric portion uh, in cryptography there are two portions symmetric and asymmetric so uh, sir will explain you symmetric portion and i will explain you asymmetric portion but uh, before i explain you that topic first first of all the basic introduction of number theory right so that you have to understand first so uh, today i will explain you that thing and then after we'll start with the asymmetric portion so 
here you can say that uh, there are uh, this terminology so basically you can say that encryption is a way to convert a original message to a form which can't be easily decoded by the unauthorized person that is the attacker so there are some terminology that you have to keep in mind the original message that uh, that is a plain text cipher key key, uh, key is called the cipher key encryption uh, algorithm that is cipher and output of the encryption algorithm that is a cipher text okay so now all of you know that here see uh, uh, there are two one is a sender and another is a receiver so in sender side what happened this is a plain text means original message is there so uh, with the help of this key the encryption somewhat some there are so many algorithms are there so in uh, symmetric portion you will uh, understand that top so in encryption algorithm is there and with the help of this key so what you get uh, the cipher text or encrypted text you get so now listen the key is very important generally the key is a, it's it's a, it's a secret between the sender and receiver so the other person intruder or attacker doesn't have a key right uh, and what about on the receiver side so receiver side what happened so in sender side finally the plain text is there and what you get cipher text but see on receiver side the cipher text is there the decryption algorithm is used and with the help of the key uh, what what do you get the decrypted text you get so this decrypted text is same as a plain text or it must be same as a plain text okay so uh, always what happen the key um, the key is, uh, is shared between what sender and receiver so the uh, intruder or attacker doesn't have that now um, you know, so um, but see um, if the key is guess or disclosed somehow then what happened so then anyone with the cipher text can do the decryption and so the uh, what what is our goal of confidentiality confidentiality means if the sender sends send some message to a receiver then only the receiver should be able to receive or read the message but see if here you can say that if the key is guessed or disclosed somehow then what happen anyone with the uh, with the cipher text can do the decryption and the, this confidentiality can be violated so simply you can say that using the encryption or decryption mechanism this confidentiality aspect of the security can be uh, achieved okay so all this portion uh, is done in your uh, first lecture everyone goal yes or no hello okay so i'm going little bit fast and then after uh, start with the new concept so uh, what about the uh, what, uh, what is cryptography so here you can see that it is the branch of the computer science which deals with how to convert a plain text to a cipher text which is both the secure and efficient so in a cryptography basically you can say that the encryption algorithm decryption algorithm is done and other is a crypt analysis so uh, uh, can anyone tell me uh, what do you mean by crypt analysis what do you mean by crypt analysis please reply what is crypt analysis <coughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. What is the purpose of crypt analysis? Can anyone tell me? Yes, Janil, you are correct. Kival says, okay. Yes, very nice. Guess the key and uh, okay. Okay, okay, done everyone, good, good try. So, uh, see, what about the crypt analysis? Means it is done to see how good or bad our algorithm is against the attacks uh, made by attacker, right? So, basically, you can say that it is the analysis of algorithm, uh, encryption, whether it's encryption or decryption, to access its strength or weakness. Right, so for that, uh, and generally, uh, the crypt analysis is done by what? The designer of the algorithm that do the crypt analysis for what? For which purpose? So to check whether how good or bad our algorithm is against all the possible types of attacks. Right. So for that, the designer of the algorithm that do the crypt analysis. And generally, what happens? The keys analysis, and uh, that is the how long someone can take to determine the key. 
okay and the second that is the attacker can also do the crypt analysis for capturing the key and this way to break or violate the confidentiality aspect of the secure communication so basically the crypt analysis is done by two the one of the designer of the algorithm that do the crypt analysis and second that is the attacker can also do the crypt analysis for capturing the key and in this way violate the confidentiality now so these are the uh, uh, this is the main uh, basic uh, goal confidentiality now i think the additive cipher that is uh, uh, done uh, done in your first lecture so uh, i will not explain you that thing so now see there are basically the two category of crypto, crypto cryptography algorithm one is a conventional or symmetric key cryptography and another is a public key cryptography or asymmetric key either you can say symmetric key cryptography or you can say conventional or the, uh, another name is for asymmetric key cryptography that is public key cryptography now what is the main difference between symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key cryptography in the case of symmetric key means the key k that is uh, uh, is same as the encrypted uh, encryption site and at the decryption site so here you can say that the key must be shared between the communicating party while in the case of asymmetric what happened the encryption and decryption keys are different so this is the main difference between symmetric key cryptography and asymmetric key cryptography so this portion i will explain you asymmetric key cryptography and sir will explain you symmetric key cryptography portion okay now uh, see uh, i think in first lecture you study that uh, additive cipher or you can say caesar cipher right so that is a symmetric cipher okay now uh, then after the second goal that is integrity so uh, what do you mean by integrity so integrity means the receiver must receive the exact data sent by a sender so if there is any modification over a communication channel by the you can say that by the intruder or attacker then what happens the receiver may get the different data so in this way you can say that the violation of integrity is done okay so there is a second goal and what about point but see for this if you want to ensuring this integrity so for that we have a hashing algorithm so that is ssa ssa 256 and another is a md5 so that is a part of asymmetric key cryptography and that i will explain you in the third internal okay and third goal that is availability so the information must be available whenever it is required so delay in response to get the required information, interruption, et cetera, may cause the violation of availability. For example, uh, the DOS attack, denial of service attack, right? So right now, just uh, you have to understand this basic concept in detail. I, uh, we will explain you later. So these are the three goals, availability, confidentiality, and integrity. Okay, so now before I explain you that uh, symmetric, uh, let's start with the number theory concept. Uh, any doubt up to this? Hello? Is there any doubt? Okay. Uh, number theory is done in your class. Extended Euclidean algorithm. Okay, okay. So, first of all, uh, tell me what is prime number? What is prime number? Sorry. <coughs> yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, listen everyone. The problem is, let's say, uh, A and B are the two numbers. Okay. Now the question is, we want to find a number S and T such that as plus bt that is equals to gcd of ab now the concept is i want to find the gcd of two number okay so for that see uh, in this way i am finding uh, and for that see 
uh, one of the algorithm is used that is extended Euclidean algorithm. So in exam, this type of question can be asked if I find the GCD of two number by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. But see, uh, in asymmetric portion as well as symmetric portion, these are some concept that is finding the GCD by using some number, multi find the multiplicative inverse. So all these num all these number theory concepts are required for um, uh, for the uh, uh, understanding the algorithm of uh, symmetric as well as the asymmetric portion. So here uh, you can say that AS plus BT that is equals to GCD of A. Now, let's see the two numbers are given to you. Uh, so we know that GCD of 75 and 21, that is three, right? All of you know that. But if I want to find this GCD of two number by using the extended Euclidean algorithm, so how can you find that? Okay, so all of you know that the 75 that is equals to 25 cross three and 21 that is seven cross three. So what is the GCD of this 75 and 21? That is three. Okay, now if you want to find by using this, so this, this is the algorithm. So all of you, if you want to write, please write down quickly because based on this algorithm, I will explain you this uh, example. Okay, so I will give you a three to four minutes. So please quickly write down so you can understand the example. Once it is done, please reply me. Please write down the algorithm. Done, everyone? Hello? Okay. Okay, so uh, write down this two to include. Okay, so listen, everyone. Uh, these are the two numbers so that I want to find the GCD of these two numbers, 75 and 21. Okay, so what I have to do here? So initially, uh, in, in our algorithm, R1 equals to A, all right? This values that you have to assign. R1 is A, R2 is B, S1 is 1, T1 is 0, S2 is 0, and T2 is 1. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, this variable that you have to initialize. So now initially, what you have to do? So let's say A equals to 75 and B equals to 21. So let's trace with this two. First, uh, A, A equals to 75 I am taking and B equals to 21. Now, first you have to write down in this way, all this variable you have to write in this way, U, R1, R2, R, S1, S2, S, T1, T2, and T. In this way, you have to write. Okay, after that, what you have to do? To see the algorithm, here it is written R1 equals to A. So R1 equals to A means this R1 equals to 75 that you have to assign, right? R2 equals to B means the R2 is a sign of what 21 value. Now then after according to the algorithm, what you have to do? 
while R2 is greater than 0. So R2 is greater than 0. Yes, the condition is true. Then what you have to do? Q equals to R1 divided by R2. So R1 divided by R2. So here 75 divided by 21. So what do you get? 3, right? What do you get? 3. Now then after, what do you have to do here? So R equals to R1 minus Q R2. So that is R equals to R1 minus Q R2. When you perform, what you get? 12 you get. Okay. Now then after, uh, here you can say that what about this S1 and S2? So initially the value is given S1 is 1 and S2 is 0. So that you have to assign and T1, T2 that also these two values are given to you 0 and 1. Right. So initially this values you have to assign. Now what, uh, what about this S? So this S that is S1 minus Q S2. So now you have a S1 and S2 value. So according to that, you get this S value. Okay, and also you have uh, T1 and T2 value initial. So what you get T equals to T1 minus Q T2, right? With the help of that, you get this minus three value. Up to this clear everyone? Hello, is it clear to you all? Please reply. Okay. Now then after see after this first step, what do you have to do everyone? So again now again uh, this while loop is repeated. Again you have to check while R2 greater than 0. So now you have to check yes R2 greater than 0. If R2 greater than 0, then what I have to do? The Q equals to every time what you have to do? R1 becomes your R2 and R2 becomes your R, right? Similarly, uh, T2 that is assigned to T1 and T is assigned to T2. Right? So here what happens, this R2 will be assigned to R1, this R will be assigned to R2 and here what happens, uh, so here you can say that uh, T2 value that is assigned to T1 and T that is assigned to uh, T1. Okay, so this thing is done. Similarly, S2 is assigned to S1 and S is assigned to S2. So this thing is initially done. Okay, R2 assigned to R1, R is assigned to R2, S2 assigned to S1. S is assigned to S2, T2 is assigned to T1, and T is assigned to T2. Okay, so this step is done. After that, what you want to do? Uh, Q equals to R1 divided by R2, uh, so uh, uh, 21 divided by 12. So what do you get? 1. Okay, so what do you get? 1. Now then after uh, R equals to R1 minus Q R2, because you have R1 and R2 value, with the help of that you get R. Similarly, with the help of this equation, what you get S value and with the help of this equation, what you get T value you get. So the same process that you have to repeat, the same process that you have to repeat and see continue how, so uh, how many times this loop will be repeated. So every time you have to check the condition R2 greater than zero. So now see every time I am checking that condition, but see after this step, what happened? After this step, now R2 is 0. Okay, after this step, now R2 becomes 0. So now I will check if while R2 greater than 0, the condition becomes false. Okay, so this is my terminating condition. And once it is done, so now what you have to do? So, so now when the condition is failed, so after that, uh, it uh, control goes outside. And what happens? Whatever the value of S1 is there, it will be assigned to S. Whatever the value of T1 is there, it, uh, it will be assigned to T. So now what do you get? See, S2, S1. S2, S1 means which value? 2. So that value uh, is assigned to S, that is 2. Now then after which value? T1, uh, T1 that is assigned to T. So that is, uh, see here, minus 7. And what about the uh, GCD? So that is R1. So whatever the value of R1 is there, that is your GCD. So GCD of AB that is equals to R1 and what you get 3. So now uh, you get the same answer because the GCD of 75 and 21 is what 3. So now finally after using this extended Euclidean algorithm what I get 3. All of you is it clear? Is there any doubt? See for that you have to do a practice everywhere. Okay. Any doubt for extended Euclidean algorithm? Hello, clear? Okay. Okay, no doubt. Thank you. Now, all of you know, uh, <coughs> here in problem that I have uh, explained, like say A and B are the two number and we want to find S and T. 
such that the AS plus BT that is equals to GCD of AB, right? So this thing that I have explained. So now here, see, uh, now here, once I get the result, just I want to verify whether the LH is equals to RHS or not. So how can I verify it? So what I'm doing here, so uh, LHS that is equals to AS plus BT. Now, all of you know that initially, here I have taken A is 75 and B equals to 21. So when I put the value over here, so A is 75, B is this. Now I, I, uh, now I have a value of S that is two. I have a value of T that is minus seven. So now finally what I get three. So now I, here I can say that LHS equals to RHS that is verified, right? So uh, I think all of you clear with this concept. So this type of question can be asked in exam find out the GCD of two number by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. You have to remember this algorithm and based on that, you have to trace it and finally you have to give the uh, result. Okay, so in this way, you have to do the calculation. Okay, now the another important point that you have to remember that is the when you can say that the two numbers are co prime or relatively prime. So the number uh, A and B are called relatively prime or co prime. If the GCD of the two number is one, again I repeat, when you can say that the number A and B are called relatively prime or co, if the GCD of two number is one, then you can say that that two number are relatively prime or co prime. Okay. Now all of you know that we know that according to the extended Euclidean algorithm, all of you know that you can write in this way AS plus BT that is equals to GCD of AB. Right, you can do it, you can write in this way. So let's say put n in place of a and put a in place of b. Okay, so in, in place of a, I'm putting n in place of uh, in uh, sorry, and uh, put a in place of b. Okay, so now here I am putting n, so ns plus at that is equals to gcd of what n a. Okay, so now uh, uh, I am doing both the side mode n. Okay. So now uh, I can write in this way, ns plus at mode n, that is equals to GCD of n a mode n, right? So this is the basic maths concept, okay? So I think all of you clear with this concept. So uh, assume, here I am writing in this way, as you have to assume that a and n are co prime. And see, uh, we have seen the definition where you can say if the two numbers are co prime, then I can uh, write in this way, the GCD of that two number is one, okay? So now here I am assuming that the A and A are, A, N are co-prime. And if A and A are co-prime, then I can write in this way, the GCD of N A that is equals to one. I can write in this way, right? So if GCD of N A equals to one, then I can I can write in this way, according to this equation, I can write N S plus A T mode N, that is equals to what? One, uh, instead of that, I am putting one. And one mode N, that is, that is what? One, okay, that is one. So that's why here I'm writing in this way, ns plus at mode n, that is equals to one. So instead of this, instead of this, I can write in uh, this way, ns mode n plus at mode n, uh, mode, uh, mode n, mode n, that is equals to one. Either I write this or this, both are equivalent. Okay, so in this way, I can write, okay? And see, so simply finally, what you get at mode n equals to one. So what it means? So two times mode n is same time as one mode n, so right? So let's say I can say that um, two mode three, what do you get everyone? Two mode three, what do you get? Hello? Two mode three, okay. Again, I do the mode three, then what happened? Again, I do the mode three, what happened? Yes, so that means here I can say that the two times mode n is same as the one time mode n. Okay, so this is the basic concept. So uh, just you have to remember this. So when if the two numbers are relatively prime or co prime, then you can say that the GCD of that two number is one. Okay, so this thing that you have to remember. Now see, so here I can write at mode n equals to one. Right, so instead of that, I can write a into t mode n that is equals to one. Now, these numbers a and t are known as multiplicative inverse of each other. So, remember, uh, remember everyone. So, here if a t mode n that is equals to one, so what is the meaning of that? So, here I can say that a and t, 
see here i can read in this way if a and uh, if a and t are co prime then i can say that a into t more than equals to 1 like in this way if the two numbers are co prime then i can say that gcd of this two number is what 1 so now listen a into t mode n equals to 1 this number a and t are known as a multiplicative inverse of each other okay so if they are a multiplicative inverse of each other then i can write a inverse mode n equals to t or i can write t inverse mode n equals to a are you clear up to this hello Hello. Can you hear me? Is it clear to you all up to this? Hello. Okay. So listen, everyone. If I write a a a into t mode n equals to one, so this number a and t are known as a multiplicative inverse of each other. So if the a into t mode n equals to one, then I can write a inverse mode n that is equals to t, or I can write t inverse mode n equals to a. Right. So here A and T are multiplicative inverse of each other. And remember, everyone, when the multiplicative, when this A inverse mode n equals to T is possible, when A and N are co prime or relatively prime, then you can say that this A inverse mode n equals to T is possible. Again, I repeat, listen. So when this multiplicative inverse is possible, so the multiplicative inverse is possible when. Here you can say that A inverse mode n equals to T. So when this is possible, if A and A n are co-prime or relatively prime, then the multiplicative inverse is possible. And again, if A and N are co-prime, then you can write in this way, GCD of that two number is clear. So if it is one, then you can say that they are a co-prime. And if they are a co-prime, then you can say that the multiplicative inverse is possible. So clear everyone, right? So first you have to check whether it's a co-prime and when it's a co-prime, if the GCD of these two number is one. And if it's a co-prime, then the multiplicative inverse is possible. So now see here. So now see the most important thing here I have written that is, if A and A and are co-prime, then it is possible to find the A inverse Code n multiplicative inverse of a. How you can read the multiplicative inverse of a with respect to n? In this way, you can read it. So, if a and n are co prime, then it is possible to find the multiplicative inverse, right? And using the extended Euclidean algorithm, we can easily find the multiplicative inverse, right? Provided a and n are co prime. Okay, so if the condition is given to you, so here you have to check whether A and N are co-prime or not. If they are a co-prime, then you can find the multiplicative inverse by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So here you can say that, let's say, uh, is uh, the, let's say the question is, is five a multiplicative inverse of 21 with respect to modulo 21, 26? So now see here. So what I'm doing here, five cross 21 more 26. So what I get here, I get one. So now see here, I can say that the five, what I want to find, I want to find the um, five, uh, multiplicative inverse of five with respect to what 26. Multiplicative inverse of five with respect to 26, right? If possible, when, it, when it's possible, if the GCD of five and 26 is what one. So, so uh, this thing that I have uh, explained, so now here what happened? So when I perform 5 cross 21 more 26, right? So what I get one. So if I uh, if I get one, right? So that means what you can see here, the 5 and 21 are multiplicative inverse of each other, right? So either I can write in this way, 5 inverse more 26 equals to 21, 
or I can write 21 inverse mod 26 equals to 5. Up to this clear? Hello? Is it clear to you all? Please reply. Okay. Now, the question is, see, here the simple method that I have explained. So if the 5 and 21 are multiplicative inverse of each other, right? So that means uh, here you can say that either you can write 5 inverse more 26 equals to 21, or you can write 21 inverse more 26 equals to 5. Okay, and when uh, when this multiplicative inverse is possible, if this two value uh, phi and um, if uh, if this a and n, right, both are what the GCD of that two is what one. So then you can say that the multiplicative inverse is possible. Now, if you want to find using the extended Euclidean algorithm, so this type of question can also be asked: how to find that find the extended Euclidean algorithm by multiplicative inverse by using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So the here the all of you know there is a basic extended equilibrium algorithm for finding the GCD. But in this algorithm, somewhat modification that you have to uh, do by using that you can find the multiplicative inverse, right? So which modification you have to perform in this algorithm? So here it is uh, given the provided a and n are co-prime, then it is possible to find the a inverse mode n. All of you know that, right? Uh, okay, now then after, um, see here the three columns are there when you uh, observe this. So here the three columns are there S1, S2 and S, right? So uh, for multiplicative uh, inverse, uh, the algorithm somewhat that you have to change because this S1, S2 and S is not required. So in this algorithm, which modification that you have to do? See here, it is given. We have to delete the S1, S2, and S three columns from the table of the extended Euclidean algorithm. So that can give the compact table. Actually, there is no need of S1, S2, S as A inverse mode N equals to T, which is written by the algorithm. Okay. So in this algorithm, what modification you have to do? This three columns that you have to remo uh, remove S1, S2, and S. Right. And now all of you have algorithm. Right. So based on that, I will explain you so you can understand. Now see, the question is, I want to find the pi inverse mode 26. Okay, so now what do you have to do here? So uh, here, uh, okay, first of all, tell me uh, the GCD of uh, this two number. See, this pi and 26, these are the co-prime or not? When you can say the two numbers are co-prime, please reply. When you can say the two numbers are co-prime everyone. If the GCD is one, right? So now see here, if I'm finding the, you can say that the GCD of this two number, what I get? What I get everyone? one right so that's why you can say that the multiplicative inverse is possible okay so now see here the uh, the question is i want to find the multiplicative inverse with respect to extended euclidean algorithm with the help of that i want to find. so what i'm doing here initially the r1 that is n value that you have to take that is 26 and the r2 that is this a value that i have to take so because when you uh, observe this algorithm initially the r1 that is a that i have taken r2 that is b so now in this algorithm what i am doing what is the value of r1 what is the value of r1 sorry the r1 value that is uh, please open your uh, open the algorithm everyone that you have written in your notebook so what you have to do what is r1 r1 that is n means c because you have to compare with this equation a inverse mode n right all of you know that a inverse uh, this equation that i have explained if a into t mode n equals to 1 then i can write in this way either i can write a inverse mode n equals to t or t inverse mode n equals to e right so you have to compare this with this okay 
so uh, here what i get phi inverse mode 26 you have to compare with this so what is the value of n that is 26 and the value of a is 5 so now what i am doing here first of all r1 will be assigned a n so what i get 26 r2 will be assigned a so what i get 5 okay so now do the same process but without without the three column that is s1 s2 s now all of you please open that algorithm so you can understand so in this way you have to write the column q r1 r2 r t1 t2 and t right now initially these r1 that is 26 r2 that is 5 okay now what, what about the q so all of you know that what is q in this algorithm the q that is r1 divided by r2 right so here q that is r1 divided by r2 what about the r can anyone tell me what about the r please reply what is the equation for r hello please reply yes r1 minus q r2 good so now according to that equation you have to calculate it uh, initially the t1 is assigned a 0 t2 is 1 right these values are fixed and t again t that is equals t1 minus q t2 so based on that this uh, calculation that you have to do now then after what happened the r2 that will be assigned to r1 r will be assigned to r2 right similarly t2 will be assigned to t1 and t will be assigned to what t2 okay so again you have to uh, do the same process right you have to repeat this uh, uh, loop until the r2 greater than zero so this is my terminating condition and once it is terminated what i have to do here so um, because see th this column that i have to remove right so once i get so finally what you get all of you know that what i get the gcd all of you know that the gcd that is whatever the r1 that i am getting that is my gcd okay so the gcd that is r1 okay so that is one and uh t equals to t1 that is uh what i get what what is the value of t1 that is minus five so which is my multiplicative inverse right so in this case your gcd is one and multiplicative inverse that is what t t that is equals to t1 whatever the value of t1 you get so that is what this which is the multiplicative inverse okay so that means here phi inverse mode 26 for that which value i am getting for multiplicative inverse that is minus 5 i am getting but see all of you know that uh, if the negative number is there okay so then what you have to do if the negative number is there then what you have to do all of you i think in first lecture it is done so please reply all of you know that uh, uh, here uh, everything is in a in a number everything is uh, in a up to what 26 all the numbers in, in the range of what 26 right so if it's a negative number, then what you have to do? If it's a, let's say in chat window that I have written, see here. If it's a number is minus five, then what I have to do? It's done in your class, everyone? Yes. So whatever the number is there, what you have to do, you have to add 26. Very nice. Okay, so that means, see, uh, most of the students are doing a mistake. So the question is, find the multiplicative inverse by using the extended Euclidean. So same algorithm you have to use, but the, these three columns that you have to remove everyone. Okay, and with the help of that, you have to find the multiplicative inverse. But what, the, what most of the students are doing, directly uh, write the answer minus one. So it's a wrong answer. What do you have to do? If the number is, because see, it's out of range. It's a, it in the range of what? Whatever the number is, it's a range of more 26. So what do you have to do? If you get the negative number, right? Then what do you have to do? The shortcut trick is just you have to add the 26. Okay? Uh, you have to add the 26 until you are not, uh, you know, until uh, you are not getting in the range. So here, what do you have to do? Minus 5 more 26. That is what I have done. So minus 5 more 26 you have to perform. So what do you get? 21 you get, right? So every time you have to do in this way. So now my final answer is what? 21. So 21 is the multiplicative inverse of 5 with respect to 26. Clear everyone? So this is the first method for finding the multiplicative inverse.
So either you can uh, do by using uh, extended Euclidean, and the other method is also uh, there. Is there any doubt? Hello. Is there any doubt? <coughs> Hello. Okay. Now the another point that I want to discuss with you that is uh, the another question is there find the uh, multi uh, uh, multiplicity inverse of four with respect to twenty six. Okay, so uh, for that, what you have to do? Just see every time you have to compare this equation with what a inverse mod n. Okay, so here what is the value of e? The value of e is four, and what is the value of n? That is twenty six. Okay. So all of you know that when I find the GCD of this two number, so GCD of four and twenty six is two, so it's not a one. Okay, so that means here you can say that the a and a are, n are not a co prime, and that's why the multiplication inverse is not exist. Okay, so if this type of equation is given to you, okay, so first of all, all of you know that when you can say that if uh, if you want to find the multiplication inverse, so first of all you have to check. If whether the GCD of this two number, uh, 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 if you want, first of all, you have to check these two numbers are co-prime or not. Because when you can say that the numbers are co-prime, so if the GCD of this two number is one, then I can say that uh, the these two numbers are co-prime. And if they are, if uh, if it's co-prime, A and A are co-prime, then you can say that the multiplicative inverse is exist. But see here in this example, what happened? The value of a is four. The value of n is twenty six. Now, when I am finding the GCD of this two number, I am getting the two. It's not equals to one. So that means here I can say that GCD is not one. That means these two numbers are not a co-prime. And if these two numbers are not a co-prime, then I can say that the multiplicative inverse doesn't exist. Clear, everyone? So in this way, you have to solve. Is there any doubt up to this? Hello. Any doubt? Okay, I think all are clear. Now see, here the another question is there. I want to find the multiplicative inverse of eleven with respect to twenty six. Okay, so what I'm doing here? So first of all, I'm finding the GCD of this two number. So when I'm calculating the GCD of this two number, then I get one. So the meaning of it is these two numbers are co-prime. So, if these two numbers are co-prime, then the multiplicative inverse is possible. So, one of the way that I have explained that is, if you want to find the multiplicative inverse, then by using the extended Euclidean algorithm, uh, with the help of that you can find, right? That is the one method by using you can calculate the multiplicative inverse. Now, another way to calculate the multiplicative inverse that is a brute force approach. By using that brute force approach, you can also calculate the multiplicative inverse. So now, second, I will explain you the second method. Next, I will explain you that thing. So, what do you have to do, everyone? So here, the question is eleven inverse more twenty six. So what you have to do? So you have to write eleven multiply by x more twenty six that is equals to one. What is the meaning? You have to find a x which satisfies this above equation. Okay, so you have to use the brute force approach and try to put all of you know that the total uh, values means uh, uh, one to twenty five. From that you have to uh, for this one by one you have to put all these values and you have to find the answer, right? So um, see, practically this approach is not possible. But see, this is another method. That's why I will explain you. So what you have to do first, you have to put one. So eleven into one more twenty six. Then what you get eleven. Then two, so uh, what do you get? Twenty-two, three, then seven. So similar way, you have to put all this value, right? Continue. You have to put a value until what you get until you get one. Okay. So different different value of x that I have to put, right? Because uh, you can say that eleven uh, inverse more twenty-six, right? So here what I am doing here, the different different value of x I am putting. So first I put uh, first I will put one. So what I, I get eleven, two then I get twenty two, three and uh, three then I get seven. So one by one I am putting all the values. Now when I put nineteen, so eleven into nineteen more twenty six. 
So when I put that value, so at that time I am getting one. Okay, so at that time I am getting one. So here I can say that the x equals to 19, we get x equals to 19 such that what I am getting? The 11x uh, in mode 26 equals to 1. Okay, so in for which value of x I am getting the one value that you have to check everywhere. So here I can say that for x equals to 19, I'm getting this value such that I, I, what I get 11x more 26 equals to 1 I'm getting. And if 11x into more 26 equals to 1, so this concept that I have explained, see here. So if a into t mode n equals to 1, then I, I can either I can write a inverse mode n equals to t or I can write t inverse mode n equals to a. Similarly, here I can say that see, if 11x mode 26 equals to 1, then I can write in this way 11 inverse mode 26 that is equals to 90. Right? Similarly, you can also write 19 inverse mode 26 equals to 11. So this clear everyone? Hello? Is it clear to you all? These are the two different methods for finding the multiplicative inverse. Brute force approach and another is an extended Euclidean algorithm. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, any doubt? Okay, I think all are clear. So, uh, see this approach is not, a, uh, is not practically used. But if uh, n is 26 here, is very large. So it would be expensive to obtain the multiplicative inverse. So normally this method is uh, not used. We are using the extended Euclidean algorithm approach. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> Just wait. Okay, so <clears throat> so now listen. If A and B are multiplicative inverse, if uh, with respect to mode and A into mode uh, A into B mode n equals to one, that is the identity of uh, multiplication. And A and B are additive inverse with respect to mode n if A plus B mode n equals to 0. That is the identity of plus, right? So these are basic maths. So I'm not going in detail. So I think all of you are clear. Is there any doubt in extended Euclidean algorithm, brute force approach? Please reply. This is a basic concept. And in each, whether it's a symmetric cryptography or whether it's an asymmetric cryptography, in sir portion as well as in my portion, this concept is used. Okay, so that's why, see, it may be possible that uh, um, uh, initially in one, two lecture, the same thing will be repeated. Okay, because it's good for you. Uh, hello? Okay, so uh, listen here, A and B are in uh, additive inverse with respect to mode N. If a plus b mod n equals to 0, that is the identity of plus. Okay, so now here I can say that a equals to 23, b equals to 3. So these are the additive inverse of each other with respect to mod 26. How? So because what I am doing, 23 plus 3 mod 26, so what I get? 26 mod 26, so finally I got 0. So that means I can say that this 23 and 3, these are the additive inverse of each other, right? For 4 and 22, uh, as a 4 and 22 is also additive inverse, right? So in this way, you have to check. You When you do the uh, summation, right, uh, and mode with respect to 26, if you get 0, then you can say that these two numbers are additive inverse of each other. Now, it is always possible to find the additive inverse with respect to mode n. But see, it is not always possible to find the multiplicative inverse of A with respect to mode n. 
okay so here this not that you have to keep in mind it's always possible to find the additive inverse with respect to mode f but see it's not always possible to find the multiplicative inverse of a with respect to mode and y because for a multiplicative inverse to exist the necessary condition is uh, the density of the, the two number is one right and if it is not possible then you can say that the multiplicative inverse uh, or the multiplicative inverse of a with respect to that mode n is not possible and that's why you can say that it's not always possible to find the multiplicative of inverse of a with respect to mode n but it's possible to find the additive inverse with respect to mode n right <clears throat> okay any doubt up to this so last 2 minutes left so i don't continue with the next topic is there any doubt up to this please reply so the next i will explain in next class yeah i will share the pdf okay deepak any doubt uh, in this extraordinary euclidean Euclid algorithm please reply everyone okay okay then thank you everyone next class i will explain the another things okay so uh, the same number theory some other concepts of uh, number theories are remaining so that i will explain in next class and then after start with the asymmetric cryptography concept Okay, thank you everyone.